back in 2014, OnePlus took the world by storm with his OnePlus One, dubbed as the flagship killer, offering a phone with top of the line specs for only a fraction of the price. Fast forward two years and now we have OnePlus's latest device, the OnePlus 3. Their new model may be never settle, but maybe not the flagship killer we once knew OnePlus to be. I have used my OnePlus 3 as a daily driver for over two months, and as amazing as this phone has treated me, I've had some quirks with it. Let's start with the design. May not be the best design OnePlus has offered, but surely enough, I still love it. Yes, it awkwardly looks very similar to some other phones, but in terms of build quality and the feel, it's amazing. In the front, we have a 5.5 inch Full HD AMOLED display, which has been getting better and better with each update. A ridiculously fast fingerprint scanner, and an 8 megapixel front facing camera, which according to Tech Radar, is the same unit found in the rear camera of the iPhone 5S. Speaking of cameras, the main camera is a 16 megapixel Sony sensor, which can record up to 4K video. It's got both optical and software stabilization with some really, really good shots. Camera software is basic with a few extra goodies and portrays great images for snap and shoot fanatics. On the right side, you got a power button that opens the camera if tapped twice and a dual SIM tray. On the left side is your volume rocker and the greatest thing ever, the alert slider being able to completely mute or turn on your priority notifications with just a simple slide. Nothing on top, but at the bottom we have a mediocre speaker, a 3.5mm headphone jack, and a USB-C port with OnePlus's dash charge capabilities, and you'll only get the dash charge if you use a specific power adapter and the cable. Under the hood is where this phone really shines, a Snapdragon 820 chip, an Adreno 530 GPU, the notorious 6 gigs of RAM, a 3000 milliamp hour battery and a 64 gigabyte built-in storage however with no external SD support. All that together just for $400. So on paper this phone is meant to be up there with the top dogs like the Galaxy S7, HTC 10 and LG G5. And if you want to bring Apple into this, Techni has two times more RAM than the new iPhone 7 Plus. So why isn't it up there? What happened to this flagship killer model that brought OnePlus its fame in the first place? My personal opinion for not being as good is in the software department. And this is also where my quirks begin to occur. At the tip of the iceberg, Oxygen OS is great. It runs Marshmallow 6.0.1. It keeps Android 99% stuck with just a few extra customization options that you don't see in the Nexus lineup, which is fine. I like that. But all in all, Oxygen OS feels like a beta software. When OnePlus first came out, it had CyanogenMod pre-installed. So those who are more software savvy, those who like to root their phones, OnePlus is a perfect phone for you. The bootloader is already unlocked and the specs of the phone can pretty much handle anything you throw at it. But for the average consumer, especially a person coming from an Apple device or an HTC device where their software is pretty good, OnePlus 3 might be a little buggy for you guys. Yes, the community for OnePlus is amazing and always on top of things and we get a lot of updates to get issues fixed. But that's the thing, we keep getting updates to get issues fixed and sometimes it will fix one thing but create another problem. In the first two weeks, I was getting an average of 2.5 to 3 hours of screen on time with basic usage for my battery. Then an update came along which fixed a few things and then my battery will go up to 5 hours of screen on time. It even hit 7 hours once. Then another update came to fix the screen colors and introduced an sRGB mode. This made my battery go back to 3 hours. And last but not least, just this week, there was another update to improve the camera quality and some more screen fixes and now I get more than 4 hours again. In the end, all I'm saying is that the software is never consistent and sometimes it feels like there's no point in having such crazy specs if the software is still buggy. The only good side to this is that the OnePlus developers and its community are always willing to assist and always look for ways to improve their devices. OnePlus is still a growing company getting better and bigger each year. The OnePlus 3 definitely attracted the mass consumer, but still have some ways to go. 
but for a $400 package, the OnePlus 3 is still one of the best mid-price range phones you can buy today.